Um, Robin, congratulations on the weekend. Um, how much better, though, are you going to have to be to beat Saracens this weekend? Yeah, we're going to have to be 10 times better, to be honest. Um, in certain areas, especially the line-out. Um, first half, you know, didn't function. So um, we'll have to spend, you know, a little bit of time focusing on what went wrong there and come up with the answers uh, and learn from that lesson, really. So, you know, in, in credit to... Um, uh, Ulster, uh, they did put us under a little bit of pressure, uh, but a lot of it was down to our own accuracies. Uh, so, you know, I've got to put my hand up there uh, and make sure that, um, you know, all the players are seeing the same pictures in their own minds as I'm seeing in mine. So, you know, the, I thought the calling was pretty good, but um, our execution let us down. So, that's one area in particular. Um, um, yeah, and, you know, some other stuff as well, but. Um, We've had a good day's prep today. Um, you know, uh, turned the page pretty quickly because we need to do that because they're a quality team. Um, you know, they, they're coming here with uh, with a point to prove, and um, we're going to have to be, as I said, ten times better than what we were against Ulster. Not being disrespectful to Ulster, you know, they're a good team and they and they pushed us to the limit. Um, but we, we're going to have to step up. We, we realise that. You, you're saying Saracens are coming here with a point to prove. Do you not have more of a point to prove after what happened in the Heineken Cup final last year? Yeah, it's the same for both sides, isn't it? Um, I suppose both teams are vying to take the pressure off each other. But uh, listen, they've got they, this is their sort of um, finale, you know, with what's been going on and being relegated to uh, next season, etc. So it's it's their opportunity really to um, to make that to make that point and and to. Um, to try and prove that you know they they're still worthy of the the European crown. So um, you know their preparations. I'm sure they, they've been going along and they've been able to watch us in in the competitive games. You know I'm not saying that their games aren't being competitive, but uh, uh, they haven't that much, you know haven't had that much to play for. Um, so uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Um, but we like I said, we're going to have to be a you know at our best, and uh, there's a lot at stake for both teams. Robin, how do you um, fix what's wrong with the lineup? Um, you know, a lot of people just see it as some fella throwing the ball in and, and he misses the ball he's, he's trying to find in the lineup. I mean, it's how important is that you don't kind of panic this week, that you just take it apart as you can and put it back together? Well, first things first, right? It's never the hooker's fault. Um, listen, we, we had a good, good conversation at half time. And uh, we put it right a lot of the things that were wrong in the first half. Um, and the majority, if not all of those, was, were, were really quick fixes. Um, so they, they were pretty uncharacteristic errors that we made. Um, as to the reasons why, you know, we, we've had a chat sort of in-house and um, we can't let those things affect us. You know, we, we've just got to be um, on our... On our best, really, and not our best, you know. Um, so, yeah, just take it on the chin and move on. You know, you're gonna have good days, you have bad days, but uh, it's important you learn the lessons from those bad days, and hopefully, it'll put us in a better place uh, for this Saturday. It's a different challenge, you know. You've got Maro um, Toji, who's the who's the chief sort of record in the middle of the line out there. Um, they're a very good uh, unit. They work well as a as an unit, both in attack and defence. You know, I think they've had. 88 lineups um, since lockdown. They've only lost a couple. Um, they're very comfortable in their own skin and the analysis work that they do. So um, our challenge is going to be that much greater. And uh, we've got the utmost respect for the work that they've been doing. And, um, you know, we're prepared accordingly. And in terms of the breakdown um, and in terms of that ferocious battle that there is going to take place, on, on, on the ground. I mean, they're one of these teams, you say, with Mara Toja, with Vanapola, people like that. Some people may have left, but there's just a work ethic there from a Saracen's point of view. Uh, but it's up to you to, uh, as, as a group of, of players, not to allow yourselves be dominated or bullied by them at that, that, that aspect of the game. Yeah, no, I know they've lost some players, but they've left a legacy, you know, and they've built a legacy. They've built uh, a reputation and an identity that they're very proud of. So, they're not going to let that go. Um, with regards to the contact area, um, you know, I think we're slowly finding our feet, uh, for want of a different phrase, really, with um, 
with regards to the way the referees interpret. And um, and that's going to be important again. You know, we've got Pascal Gazet in the middle. Um, <clears throat> so it's important that we see things as he sees it um, very early on in the game. And the best players are able to do that. The best players are able to adapt their game uh, and understand the referee's interpretation of the breakdown of what's illegal, what is it, et cetera. Um, but we can take confidence uh, from last Saturday. You know, they had... Uh, threats on the ball could see in particular um, you know he was very strong the last time we played him so you know we managed to uh, to sort of nullify the threat there so we, we're going to have to do the same amount of work um, and again improve in that area uh, so <clears throat> you know the rules of the nature of the game really you, you're going to have to be pretty close to that ball carrier from an attacking point of view to make sure that there's no separation and you allow those defenders in so you know, communication and attack is going to be key. Um, and the battle for the game line is going to be as ferocious as ever, you know. Uh, so, um, no quarter asked, no quarter given. And, um, like I said, we're going to have to manage the referee, which is something, again, that we, I think we did um, particularly well uh, last Saturday. Hi, oh, Robin. It's uh, Nick Mullins, PC Sport here. After afternoon. Um, Hello there. Can you just talk about how much you're enjoying being back involved on a day-to-day -day basis um, with club province and, and getting your hands dirty every day these days. Yeah, I feel very fortunate in, in the in the current climate, you know, with what's going on in, in the wider world, um, if you like. Um, it was it was a very surreal feeling on the pitch last Saturday at the final whistle. Um, it, it was one of, you know, did that really happen? Did it, are we actually playing rugby? Was that really a final? Um, so it's taken a while, um, but I'm thoroughly enjoying the day-to-day -day stuff, you know. And um, again, I, I, I'm picturing myself the fact that I, I've ended up in this situation right, right from the word go, you know. Um, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, the boys have been like, excellent. Uh, they've accepted me. They've welcomed me in. Um, and, you know, if nothing else in this period, it's, it's helped to... Well, it's allowed me an opportunity to get them more uh, to get to know them more on a personal level as well. You know, uh, with the number of Zoom calls we had during that lockdown period, etc. Um, it wasn't all rugby, uh, and I I was keen to push that and benefit and from it and uh, find out a bit more about them. But um, from a rugby point of view, obviously I'm I'm learning um, from them. Hopefully, as much as they're learning from me. So. Um, it's a meeting of two worlds, I suppose, because you know I've been in the, in the international arena for so long, um, and you know Leinster have been the sort of for me the standard bearers, um, not only domestically with the uh, Pro 14, but in Europe as well. You know, it's one of the, one of those teams, one of those results that you you just shake your head and oh, they've done it again. You know, they've they've got the the winning formula. But um, so to have that inside. Um, to, have, to see that from the inside, um, I still come myself very fortunate uh, it, to be in the position that I am. Um, and I'm more than aware of, of the pressure that, and the duty that that um, brings along with it, you know, having this role. Because, um, like I said, you, you've got to maintain that standard um, and kick on and improve. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Obviously, you know, I'm not, no different from anybody else in the world at the moment. Um, I'm away from my family. Um, you know, there are certain restrictions that don't allow you to, to mix um, and to make the most of of your life, etc. But, you know, I'm repeating myself, but I'm just uh, cut myself very fortunate that I've got a job uh, and I am back today today. Um, and, I'm, and I'm making the most of it, you know, and um, obviously winning on Saturday made it a little bit better, uh, life a little bit better to cope with. Um, but you know, let's hope from a from a spectacle point of view that supporters um, will be allowed before long uh, and to to give the the players the the support and the atmosphere that they deserve to play in. You know, because they're quite physical and brutal these encounters, and it'll be no different on Saturday. So it's unfortunate the supporters can't be there um, and to to voice their support on both sides. Um, mm. and to make it a to make it a, a great occasion, but um, there we are. It's, it's the situation we find ourselves in, um, so we, we've got to got to get along with it. Um, yeah, so um, no, I'm loving it. I'm loving it.